Now at four, as the months drag on with the coronavirus pandemic, doctors are seeing more and more so-called long haulers, people who have had COVID-19 but still have health problems months after recovering from the virus. I spoke to some Connecticut long haulers about what it's like living with long-term effects of COVID-19 long after it's come and gone. I felt sick on March 12th. Steve Adkins and his wife Rita were among the first people in Connecticut diagnosed with coronavirus. They live in Clinton and they believe they got it while attending an outdoor concert in Madison in early March. There was a guy on the other side of the table, at the, to my back to him, with a pretty bad cough, coughing in my direction. Rita wound up sick too. I had all the symptoms. But her symptoms were not severe and didn't require hospitalization. Steve spent two weeks at Yale New Haven Hospital. These selfies he took are from some of the darker days in the ICU when he wasn't sure if he'd live to see his wife again. We hadn't really said goodbye. We hadn't had that last kiss. We hadn't hugged. I was hard. Excuse me. Okay, good. No problem. Um, that was hard. One of my big reliefs was that I didn't give it to anybody else. But now, seven months later, relief is replaced with frustration about a new concern, the long-term effects of COVID. Steve is a long hauler. He recovered from the virus, but now has long-term complications, something that surprised him since at 67 years old, he's never had health problems or even been on medication and has always been healthy, an active boater and cyclist. Felt really good in June. I felt just like, wow, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm light, I'm on the bike, I'm, I'm exercising, I'm riding some decent mileage. I just felt like I was a poster child for recovery. And then it was just um, more recently in, 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 uh, um, um, in late August, I woke up one morning and I had double vision. And then he was diagnosed with AFib, an irregular heartbeat that increases your risk of heart failure and stroke. There's no true cure, but it can be controlled with medicine. So now that you know that you have long-term, perhaps permanent health problems, how does that make you feel? I feel betrayed because we knew, or somebody knew this was a bad illness in March, and we weren't led to believe it was a bad illness. I mean, that, that concert wouldn't have happened if we had been if we had been alarmed as we should have been in January or December. Rita too has never had health problems and yet she has lasting effects from COVID. I have um, chronic fatigue where I'll get up in the morning at nine o'clock and at 11 o'clock I'll tell him I'm really tired and I'll lie down and sleep for four hours. It's just overwhelms me. Sometimes I'm driving and I you have to pull over to the side of the road because I'm nodding off. So my, that's my big thing and headaches. Rita and Steve are not alone. We're learning more and more of growing numbers of COVID long haulers. Coming up in part two of this segment, we talk to the president of the American Heart Association about the long-term effects of COVID. Patricia Del Rio, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.